the Triforce podcast. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Thank you for listening. And girls, uh, to me, Lewis, of the Oscast, Pyrian Ted, Forsyth Flax of Twickenham, London. Yeah. That's am, I also, am I not of the Yogs cast? No, not really. Yes, of course. Okay. I didn't. Well, and Sips, Chris Lovitz, Canadian citizen living in Jersey, the yeah. little island near France. Didn't vote. English, not, Englishman. Non, non-voter. Through and through. Um, non-voter. Yeah. It, is, it is voting day today in the United Kingdom. So this, 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 the podcast is usually delayed about six days. Yeah. Uh, we record it on Thursday. It goes out the Wednesday after. Yeah. And uh, although that might be a little bit delayed this week due to the fact that we're moving office. Yeah. Right. Um, next Monday and Tuesday. You, we were just mentioning before the podcast that poor old Sipsy... Can't vote, but he can vote in the Canadian elections. Yeah, but I didn't vote um, in that one either. So uh, you do get to vote. It's not like you're completely excluded from all opportunities. It's a waste. I never vote. I, I don't care enough to vote. I I'm, didn't think I'm you'd really... get to vote because you're a convict or an ex-convict. Well, there's that too. But I wouldn't have voted anyway, so... They called you the portage um, killer. runner. Yeah. The killer. No, <laughs> runner. You, you, th- you stole from banks by portaging right. up to them. I mean, if I'm going to be... If I'm gonna be a, a, a convict, I'm <laughs> going to be a convict for something cool and not for running a portage away from banks. What like... is not cool about portage and run robbery? That's pretty uh, cool. You'd ha- if you were know. in prison for that, everyone would be like, "Oh my god, it's the portage." They would robber. though. You would be a bitch straight away. They'd be like, "You wouldn't the be a fucking... bitch." They'd come and ask hey, you about your stories. Hey, portage boy, come into the shower. I'm ready to <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> and I'd be like, "No, I actually killed people." And then they'd be like, "Oh, I don't want to fuck you now." Like that's that's how prison works in my so eyes. So I guess so. if you're in prison, you can't vote. But if you're an ex-con, can you can you vote? Do you get your vote back it's a, when you're out I of mean, prison? I mean, this is an interesting topic because, you know, they always talk about prisons and reform and stuff like that. And, you know, people go into prison and the idea is that you spend a lot of time in prison and you contemplate the bad things that you did. You become a better person and then you come out of prison and then you can just start living life again. But the reality is, is like if you go to prison, you are basically fucked for the rest of your life. Nobody wants to fucking touch you with the barge pole after... After you come out of prison, nobody trusts you, regardless of how reformed you think you are or actually are. Nobody's going to give you a job. Like if I if I ran a business where I actually hired people and I found out somebody was in prison, fuck you. You're not getting hired. Like I don't want I don't want it doesn't even matter what you did. You just it's the trust that's broken. Right. So like basically you become like a leprous society after you come out of prison. So just don't. go. Here's my question, though. Would you hire a leper? No, I would not. Mm. So you don't like the lepers either. I think what it's kind of, what kind of what kind of things could you? Could it's not you... contagious. Well, how do other people get it then? Like, where does it come from, and where does it go? And prison, you get it in prison. Oh, but would you? Right. Would you judge people differently if you knew what their crimes were, though? You know, if it was what if it was like some marijuana that they had been dealing when they were a teenager or whatever? Yeah. Would you judge them? No, what I about mean, that? if it was if. Yeah, I guess, like, if somebody was in prison... I mean, you wouldn't really be in prison for dealing marijuana as a teenager, though, would you? (laughs) Mm. What if you were 18 or 21? If you did, like, like 20 years in prison, you you did something pretty bad. Well, (laughs) you know what? This this is an interesting story, actually, because uh, I was at university with a guy who'd spent a lot of time in prison. Like, years and years in prison. And I went to Plymouth University, and the day that I got there... Uh, we went to the house. We, we'd, we'd gone down a couple of weeks previously um, to find a place to live, and we'd found this shitty apartment, um, or it was a house, and we, you know, we had a room in it. And we're there, I'm carrying my stuff up the steps, uh, Mrs. F's uh, parents are dropping us off, and um, this, this guy, he must have been about 42, 43, quite a hard-looking guy, tattoos on his face and his neck. He starts walking up the steps. I was like, wow, I wonder who this guy is. And he was like, all right, my name's Graham. Can I help you move in? I was like, you live here as well? He was like, yeah, yeah. So we got chatting and he was, he, he was starting a university. He had come from prison that day. Like he got out right. and this was where he was living now. So he left prison, got the, got the bus and the train and everything back to Plymouth. I think it was like whichever the one is, like Dartmoor Prison, which is a hard prison, right? That's where he'd yeah, been. Yeah. And he'd been there for... <laughs> I think he'd served an eight-year sentence for armed robbery. Right. And he'd robbed post offices um, with a gun. Um, it wasn't a real gun, but it counts as armed robbery if it's a pretend gun. 
Otherwise, everyone will go with a pretend gun and get like five years off their sentence or whatever. Um, right. So he goes in with a fake gun and, you know, because he didn't have a real gun. And he would rob village post offices because there's never <laughs> any police around. It's worth a good no. few grand or maybe 500 quid Give or whatever. Give me all those stamps. Yeah. I'm going to need all those all those uh, pencils <laughs> and pens and rubbers. Give me a pick uh, a Give mix. me those notebooks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got any of those airmail stickers in here? I'm going to need them all. I like to stick them <laughs> on my face. Just waving a pistol I, around this old lady. Oh, yes, please don't shoot the envelopes. They're very precious to I'm us. I'm going to take two of those pints of milk. Well, I submit this to you. I'm sure the guy was probably pretty nice and helpful moving and stuff like that. But the thing is, I think, like, human nature, like, once you've popped your crime cherry, you know what I mean? <laughs> once you've crossed that threshold, he's going to probably do something like that. Stuff. No, but he's going to probably do some fucking devious shit like that again in his life. No, right? he. Because this is the thing. He was terrified of going back to prison. Like, he'd just right. done this spell. He hated it. I mean, okay. I, everybody should hate being in prison. He fucking hated it. Like, he wouldn't really talk about it much. He told us, when we, we would tease him occasionally about getting, um, you know, what, what happens in the shower, Graham, and stuff like that, he was like, we didn't didn't see any of that. I was like, really? He goes, yeah, because if anyone was caught doing any of that, you know, we'd fucking kill them. And I was like, okay, let's not bring that subject <laughs> up again. Jesus. But, but he, he, like, if we were, we, we got in trouble with the police a few times at university, you know, just student shit. Like, we stole a bunch of street traffic, uh, what do they call it, the street street furniture, you know, like uh, the stuff they put around potholes. We, we robbed a load of that and stuck it in yeah. our back garden and stuff. And, um... One time we burnt it all in a bonfire and the fire brigade and the police turned up because it looked like a massive fire. But in fact, it was just a, a, a bin out the back that we'd filled with plastic and set fire to it. So they gave us a bullock right. in there. We would also, there was like a four lane road outside our front door. It wasn't like a motor, it was like a main junction uh, on Mutley Plain in, uh, in Plymouth. And we would throw in an American football across the road, like over the heads of all of the cars and everything like that. And this police car turned up and bollocked us. Now, the moment the police car turned up, Graham disappeared. He was like a little cloud of dust in the shape of Graham, where he had been, because he was so <laughs> right. scared of... Uh, he look, was so that scared would of fuck his probation. Like, so he literally, he wouldn't do anything at university. He was super careful spent a lot of time indoors, you know, did, didn't sort of go out. He, he would come out to the pub with us, but he tried to keep it on the DL rather than going nuts because he was worried, you know, I'll get drunk or do something stupid and it'll be bad. Because he had, like, prison tattoos. You have them on your face. For every year in prison, you get, like, another dot on your on your face. And or I think on your neck is Borstal or one of them. It, it, there's one of the ways around it is on your what hand and stuff. That's prison for young offenders. Is, is this a thing you have to do? Well, I, mean, why, I think, why I think they... when you're in prison, you do what everybody else is doing. You don't be like, well, right. I'm not interested in all these tattoos it's, it's, and, yeah, and roughhousing like and jugging. I'm going to no, just there's... stick to, to something more, more n normal. I'm going to read a book. How about that? You, you read a book and you like, like your it, fucking it, thickos? That's why you're in yeah. prison. You get stabbed. It's like a it's like a shitty, shitty society in there. You have to sort of like befriend people and do the things that they're doing and go with the flow in a lot of cases and stuff, you know, like the last thing you want to do in prison, I think is isolate yourself from everybody yeah, yeah. because then you're more likely to be like, you know, raped and whatnot, like by other inmates and stuff like that. Like there's a lot of shit that goes on in jail yeah, that you yeah. have to sort of like, you know, be on, on top like of, also I think guess. about so the, just the, the rules of no prisons. Community, you? Yeah. But the rules of the prisons are obviously there in a way to maintain the balance right like these are these rules of prison i'm sure they've been the same forever if you stick a bunch of dudes in a fucking jail for years and years there needs to be very strict social order rules you know not, i don't, I don't want to say etiquette because i doubt they call it that but the way things are done right in a big ass this is the way we do it <laughs> Yeah. Which is the way we do it. And, you know, you don't want to fuck with that and go, well, you know, there's a lot of inefficiency in your system here. Yeah, you, do, you're not gonna, <laughs> you don't want to go into, into jail and be a revolutionary because, A, nobody's going to get behind that. Like, all those guys in there just are doing their own shit and stuff. Like, they don't want you to get up and do some really, like, tearful speech and, like, overthrow the warden and stuff like that. Nobody's in there to do that. Like, they're all in there to, like, trade smokes like, you know, kick each other's butts a little bit in the showers and stuff, do their, their time and then get out and then, you know, live like a normal life. But again, I think that I think any normal life after prison is like is is hampered, like it, like in the States, like you can't I don't think you can vote anymore after you've been in, in in prison. There's like a lot of things you can't do. There's a lot of like things that they do to keep track of you and stuff like that. Like, I think I think it just becomes a lot more difficult, like 
Like life's hard enough already, right? But then, yeah. mm, God, if prison you got, is like if you, one of my greatest fears as well. If you got jail time prison. under your belt, like life is like a hundred times <laughs> yeah, a fucking harder. harder. Well, yeah. I mean, there's there's a bunch of things like you have to declare when you're traveling. Like I think when you enter the states, isn't there? You have to fill out a little form that says, "Yeah, I've broken the law." Because if, yeah, it's, so, if it's something of, bad, think, they'll be like, "Fuck off." Yeah, yeah. Immigration slips and everything when you go to other countries. Always ask if you're an ex-con. Like it, it's you know they they want to know this about you because I think I think people generally just don't trust people who've been to jail and yeah. and rightly so probably because I mean like if, I, if you've if you've robbed somewhere, you know, what are the chances you you're gonna then suddenly go, "I will never break the law again." You know, it's, no, it's like but, and you've that's crossed the, thing. the line. Maybe, you know, maybe you don't even mean to. Like you know, like your situation is just is going to vary, right? Yeah, like yeah. You might get out of jail and you might be poor as fuck. You pro- you don't have anyone around you, no support, nothing. You you might be inclined to go back into committing a crime just to stay alive or something like that. But I think like after you've committed a crime, it's probably easier to do it again, sort of thing. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like. Maybe you're comfortable being the a criminal. The seal has been broken. <laughs> That's it. Oh, it. That's what I, I think. Know. That's what I think. It's a classic. It's a classic suggest like suggestion, though, isn't it? That that people will meet people on the inside who end up hooking them up into deeper things. You know, you you make contacts, and that they those people are in the sort of in that in that world. And around that world, you know, people coming up with a scheme to maybe rob a bank using a portage, and they're like, "We need the portage, yeah, man." And then, and then changing their mind and killing people because that's cooler than like just robbing a right. bank and yeah, getting sure. gaining street cred and jail cred so, and stuff. Sips, like if you were running your strip club on Jersey, as right. you have previously <laughs> Sips yeah. strips, yeah. Yeah. Sip yeah. strips, uh, it's like a CD strip bar near the airport. Um, you know, catches the the old crowds heading back. You know, they think, oh, you know, it's a business trip, but maybe I'll just stay a little bit later yeah. and catch the later plane, and I'll visit Sip Strip. Man, I was th- thinking about my strip club the other day, and it was yeah. it, it happened when I was I was cooking some I was cooking dinner. Okay, were you doing cooking with Sips? Were you cooking the halloumi yeah, peppers recipe I was, from yeah, last I was time? Doing the Do we have hal- another one of those halloumi coming peppers? Up? Um, I mean, I didn't prepare one, but I'm sure I can wing it if you want. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So there I was preparing a halloumi pepper surprise, and uh, <laughs> it, was, it was nice. It was sizzling away. It was smelling really good, and I had some music playing because it's nice to listen to music when you're in the kitchen. I'd do a little bit of dancing and like do, yeah. do the dinner and shit like that. And yeah. um, high voltage by Electric Six came <laughs> on. Yeah, yeah. And I and and when I was listening to it, I was like. Man, I would love to see women strip to this song. I would have this song. I would do like a choreographed strip with all of my girls in the strip club, and they would strip to this song, and it would be really good. I think. It, would you show like, them how to do it as well? Well, no, I'd hire. You somebody gotta do it like this, girls. You gotta, um, you gotta shake your hips, ladies. No, I like ha- this. I get like, a, like you know, I'd get like one of Andrew Lloyd Webber's like choreographers or something in to like. Do a little jig uh, for them and stuff, you know. Andrew Lloyd Webber's choreographer. Well, so it would be like Cats, <laughs> the musical, but <laughs> yeah, but to high voltage, <laughs> but with and they're that naked. Would work. And they're call naked. it, call it yeah. pussies instead of cats, and do like a recreation. Just call it pussy. That, that'd be great. Yeah. So so yeah. So that was You're my genius. P. Sorry, I mean P five five Y. Call it P five five Y. Not even a shower thought. Yeah. It was more of like a cooking thought. It was weird too. Like my family was just in the other room, and there I was thinking of my strip club. So. That doesn't even exist. Wife, come in here. Yeah. I will show you how to strip in my strip club. Which I haven't even opened yet. Yeah. Would you hire, though, and this is the case where it might be good. Like, imagine you were looking for a heavy, right, on the door, man. Right. Would you hire someone? I thought someone? you meant a stripper. I was like, no, I'm not. That's not this. Would you hire someone who had stripper. on the CV, um, you know, uh, I've, I've, you know, I've uh, beaten up a bunch of guys before. You know, I've been to prison a few no, times. I, I, no, I wouldn't. I would be really apprehensive about hiring somebody who'd been to jail because, like, you just don't know, like, who they know, who they hang around with, what they're capable of. But maybe you of. want that in they're that world. Start dealing drugs. That's exactly who you need in that world, Sips. You need someone with connect, criminal yeah, underground if, connections. No, you don't. no, you don't for a bouncer. Jeez, you just need somebody who's going to hit the gym for 12 hours a day and is ripped to fuck and is ready to, like, just intimidate people people you know like all he's got to be able to do is like occasionally shove drunk people out of the way like it's not crack some right. fucking heads they're not you don't street need to be a criminal fighters. master man. yeah yeah well i'm just thinking like you know if i'm gonna set up my own cd strip bar i'm gonna want a fucking series of like what are they called um well i'm not setting up a cd strip bar unlike you lewis i'm going for something high class where they listen to high voltage in the mafia <laughs> 
you have like the Godfather, and then you have like the, the Capos, the, sort of lieutenants. They're the, the, Capos. They're the, yeah, they're the lieutenants. The Capo de Tutti ca- Capi is the, the top guy. We need some Capos. We need some like head crackers. Yeah. No, that's they're no, not the, Capos. The, the Capos ca- are the captains. Capos aren't men. Those are soldiers are the head crackers. Yeah, ca- the soldiers are the head crackers. Ca- Capos aren't cracking heads. They're sitting in a in like a mahogany room with soldiers. stacks of money around them, saying, "Hey." Go out and crack some heads. Come Jimmy back Glass. tomorrow. Would you get me Jimmy glasses? I... Jimmy, Polly No Nos owes me five beans. Go get the beans. <laughs> Go get the beans. <laughs> right, you are, boys. <laughs> uh, pick me up some fucking gabloosh and a fanazi. On the way back. Get, go 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 by my sister's house and get some ziti as well. Get the fucking, fucking ziti. Tell a carms Maron. ziti is the best. Maron, you, fucking you fucking you fucking ape you, you fucking ape you get the fucking ziti. <laughs> oh, I'll never get tired of mafia chat. No, oh, it's so and, good, uh, Lewis. Uh, you got to You need to educate yourself, motherfucker. Like that. That is. That's poor coming from you. Like, read about the the hierarchy of the uh, mafia before the next episode, and we'll quiz you. <laughs> I think that if I was because you, any you seem to not know right? shit about according the mafia. to Pivlax's story, Sips. If I were to hire any fucking ex con so thinking, oh, this guy's going to be a right bruiser, right heavy, yeah. he's going to be like, poof, like a cloud of dust as soon as any trouble starts. If he's on probation, yeah. Well, right. here's the thing. If you hire the, like, what kind of club do you want? If you want the kind of club that's like a hangout for a gang, like the like the it's, restaurants no, like, in yeah. Goodfellas it's where like, they always like go. On no, it's supr- like, yeah, on the it's Sopranos, like, a front. like uh, the front one, yeah. The strip yeah. club. What was that one called again? Oh, God. I can't, can't remember. The, slip, Man, the slippery, I, slippery... Have you ever been Tip, in, like, a mafia front? No. Um, I mean... Pr- yeah, probably. Not knowingly. Because I, 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 I've definitely, like, when I was, like, on a family holiday, definitely walked into, like, a, a, a really sort of quiet Italian... Down a quiet Italian side street. This was the kind of thing my parents used to do. You know, my dad and mum would wander into, like, a quiet Italian side street where there was this sort of little, little quaint little restaurant and we'd go yeah. in. And we were obviously little kids, so, you know, it was, it was all... F- it was all quiet in there, and there'd be like one woman in there. She'd be like surprised to see us, yeah. And uh, we'd be like, do, "Do you serve food?" She's like, "Yeah, I guess. Just come and sit down, <laughs> you know." And you'd end up like eating in someone's felt like someone's living room, wise. But you know, it's like one of these quaint little yeah, it's like Italian, a club or something. It's like a society meeting place. And there's like a, a bunch of guys sat around another table with like prison tattoos you, and like dots on their face. Not so much those places because like you never know, but like. I think I think definitely fronts for drugs are places like you know those like earthy stores that sell like chimes and like fucking <laughs> scarfs and crystals and you stuff that you fronts? never you never fucking see anyone in. They have to be. They don't make any fucking profit. I can't see that anyone goes in those stores. So like they have to just be there's, I, the person in there knows nobody wants to go into that store because it's too fucking weird and like there's nothing in there to buy really that's of any interest, right? So mm. what they do is they sit in there and then they just like ring up sales through the cash register and that's how they launder money. That's what they do. They just like right. all day long ring up like Because they're just selling rocks sales. for hundreds of pounds. Exactly. So they're like... Yeah, they just yeah. go outside the back garden and pick yeah, up a load yeah. of rocks. And like occasionally they order in some stock, but like barely ever. But yeah, like they must just be in there laundering money because like... You never see anyone go into those places. Well, it must be the same with like fine art and stuff like this, or arts. These these very high. Uh, also, maybe sex shops too, right? You never see anyone going into a sex shop, right? Well, that's but, it's different with the sex no, shop. Nobody the thing, wants to right? be here's seen going into one. Maybe right? the sex shop is the perfect drug thing because it's like you know you go into the sex shop, yeah. and you buy some drugs, and you're all embarrassed because it's a sex shop, but. But people won't think. It's it's like yeah, you step it's, outside it's like, and there's a whole bunch of people looking at you. Like I didn't even buy sex stuff. I was buying drugs in there. Like and you just like you <laughs> pull out a big bag of cocaine, and wave it it's around. Exactly, it's the classic way to lie, yeah. right? It's like it's basically is is you know if you're if you're caught in a lie, you should say something embarrassing that's that's not true because people will think oh well he wouldn't have he can't be he can't have been buying drugs. He's just said he's buying a big deal, though. You know, that's yeah. embarrassing enough to admit to that. There were there are those companies, aren't there, that rip people off. And if people request a refund, they send them the refund, but they send it from their other company that's called Giant Dildos Inc. And <laughs> when you take it to the bank, you have to cash the check. 
from Giant Dildos Inc. Uh, so people don't. That, that's the scam. You force people to, you well, embarrass them so greatly that they don't want to see that on their bank statement or take it to the bank. There are check cash. Oh, I see. You don't want to see all the bank statement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could be even worse than that. It could be like, you know, red hot prison prison fun. Yeah, they give it a name com. that's like super embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, I, have a, okay. I have a tiny penis. Limited. Consider this, okay? You're an undercover cop and you you you're led to a sex shop where the guy that you need to do an undercover arrest on is is he's definitely in there, okay? An undercover arrest. Yes. You're doing an undercover arrest of a guy what does that in, mean? in a sex shop, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> but you know you, you have to get him because this is your big chance. Slide. But he's in Just the sex on. shop, okay? So yeah. you're an undercover cop and you have to like Walk into What's the sex name? shop. Okay, your name can be I don't Kaminsky. know. Kaminsky. 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 There you go, McGarnacle. Your name is your name is Kaminsky, and you're going to do this bust. But you have to walk into the sex shop to do it, right? So, and yeah. it's on a really busy high street, and there's like women and children all over the place, like you know, doing stuff like that. And there you are walking into the sex shop, right? There's two cops, McGarnacle and Kaminsky. No, no, there's only the one. It's just, you, it's just you by yourself. You don't have there's any people backup. Walking You're by. going in solo, Kaminsky. No backup so, on this so one. So you have to. So you have to do. You you have to enter the sex shop, which takes balls. I would say, like you don't want anyone to see you doing that. Really, realistically. Yeah, and right? you're wearing a wire. So when you go in and you arrest the guy, <laughs> really do you make a big show of it to like when you're on your way out to be like, I wasn't going in there to buy sex stuff, everybody. I'm a cop. Yeah, I was arresting this guy. Like, would you make like a big hoo ha about it? And what if you went in there and the guy wasn't even fucking there? It was like, you know, some bogus information. You're like, ah, oh, fuck, now i got to walk out of this sex shop. But I, I suppose the thing is if you're walking out of a sex shop and you don't have a bag, it's probably okay, right? But well, then people are just like, he's fucking perverted. He went in there to look around. He didn't even buy anything. He went in there. He bought a butt plug and put the butt plug in <laughs> maybe, and he walked maybe, straight yeah, maybe out. Maybe it's in his ass right now. He didn't but even But maybe McGonagall went in there and he was like, oh, wow, this is not what I expected this sex shop to be like. This is really nice. <laughs> There's all sorts of good things in here. Yeah. Yeah, oh, man, you know what? I, I could really do with one of those. popcorn. This is an incredible. You know, a, a, yeah. friend, a school friend of mine ran the sex shop in Bournemouth. It's gone now, sadly, but it was at the top of the triangle for any of any of you that know Bournemouth. You guys don't, obviously. But it, no. that was what he did. Like uh, after school, he, um, we, you know, we were all sort of at university and stuff, and we come after back from time school. to time. Not after that's school. Classic, after school had finished. That's a classic thing you do. After school, he went and ran the sex shop. Those yeah. two <laughs> after we'd finished school. Okay. <laughs> oh, Clever he'd clocks. go home and change out of his school uniform into something <laughs> more appropriate, and then <laughs> off he went up to the top of the triangle to run the sex shop all night long. <laughs> he was only thirteen, so oh, he didn't know shit. what he was talking about. But uh, people went in. What a list. hero! Is this any good? I don't know. I'm 13. I'm a virgin. <laughs> I'm a child. McGonagall, quickly, grab all the butt plugs. <laughs> no, Kaminsky, we're here on business. Uh, you got to trap this 13-year-old. Listen here, you little I, I child. Went, I went into a sex shop once when I was in Amsterdam because there's a lot of them. And it's it's more, it's less frowned upon there, right? Because that like the red light district is the red yeah. light district. You just right? got to so go see it. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, you just go in and you... You browse around and laugh a little and you say like, oh, my God, this is crazy and stuff. But like I've never actually been into a sex shop anywhere else. And honestly, I, I don't think I ever would. Like I no. would feel so point? fucking embarrassed doing it. Like, but I, th- I think they're not for people. I think nowadays, obviously, you can order everything online. So this, the, the age of the sex shop is kind of dying out because there's no embarrassment. Yeah. Say if you wanted to order a, a massive dildo it's just gonna yeah. be a thing in a box like who cares right i mean you yeah. get something from amazon there's no way you'd know it was a dildo the, uh, they, it doesn't come in a what dildo if it's box. like in a branded box dildos.com it's like bright pink <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> picture of a dude sticking a dildo up his ass on the front <laughs> buttplugs.co.uk so thank you, you need for to, your uh, order sign for this dildo yeah sure yeah, that's one every day this week, sir. You've had one of these dildos delivered. Oh, I'm going through them fast, Mr. Postman. Says here on, they keep getting lost up there. It says here on the contents, <laughs> extra, extra large anal beads? Um, could you? It's a string of beach balls. Yeah. Just a string of beach balls. <laughs> but um, he's, he, it was weird, I think, um, with the whole uh, sex shop thing. Like, 
now, it, yeah, like I said, online. I think it, it's killed the the top shelf magazine and sex shop industry at a at a stroke. <laughs> I've noticed that there's not there's no longer <laughs> nice top one. shelves in places like like some not places. As often. Yeah, yeah, it's but, super rare. But they're Post not like visit. everywhere. They had that yeah. like that like the sensor. Uh, plate thing, right? Like the the sensor the the censoring plate, I should say, on the top rack, right? Yeah. Like the rest of the the rest of the racks had like that see through plastic to hold the magazines in, and then the top rack had like the <laughs> like the solid one that you yeah. couldn't see through. But people would always pick move them down to like the comics shelf just to to mess with the kids. Like we we yeah. we would move that them down. That was like when we were kids. That was the big thing that you had to do. You had to go into the store and buy like a try to buy a, like a, a Playboy or something like that. Yeah. Like everybody got dared to do it. Everyone had to do it. Everybody had to like suffer like the humiliation oh of the guy yeah. saying, "You're I only ten years old. That. You can't buy this," and like <laughs> laughing at you and stuff. I wonder what percentage of customers are going into a shop on a dare. It's probably like ten percent. 10% of all the people that walk in the door are there on a dare to try and buy booze or porn or steal something on a dare. It must be boring as shit just watching these the people dare come industry in. industry yeah. is key to our economy, it is. in fact. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But they never buy anything. That's the damn shame. So I went to, uh, I remember going on a, fr a French school trip, right? Because we, we went, I went to school in Essex. It's not too far from wow. France. So we go on these day trips to France fairly regularly on the old ferry. Yeah. And um, I remember one time we were in France, obviously some of the kids had, had dared each other to go in and buy the dirtiest French magazines that they possibly could. That's right. all of and them. And they came They're out with They're all they very, came out yeah. with some absolute filth. And I remember the, the one of the weirdest ones was women putting candles in up like out, like just up the bum, <laughs> and then lighting right. the candle. That right. was the thing, right? Would they it was wait just for them women to burn with lit down? candles? Was it like a, a challenge? Thing? Women with lit candles sticking out their bum. That was literally the whole magazine. Right. Is that and is that like candelabra so... porn? Like really, really, really into candelabra? It was it was very <laughs> specific and weird. Um, and I remember like this magazine had been. It was partly because it was quite dirty, but partly because it was. It got passed around the whole like bus of kids, you know, um, and eventually, you know, the teacher got it and sort of told that told everyone off kind of thing. But it was I don't know I don't know why I remember that now. But a dirty magazines were definitely a thing. We had we had when we used to have we had lockers obviously in our school. Um, we had this one kind of locker and it was full of copies of the Daily Sport. Right, mm. it was just like it was like the porn. The daily the porn, the, the, locker. The porn locker, right? Nice. <laughs> and, if, and everyone knew about it, and you could get the key to, <laughs> to the porn locker. And I don't think you know it was just it was just like an interesting. No one was like jacking off to it or anything. No. Do you know what I mean? Well, like in school, I mean, I grew up. It was in, more this. I grew up in Canada, so we had like a cache in the woods. <laughs> we had like a, a cooler in the woods. You wood. had to portage out. <laughs> you to had it, to though. walk out into the woods and find the cooler, and it was full of full of porn. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> it would I mean, get it raided all the time as well. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I think the old uh, the old porn locker got got Dang. raided a few times and moved around. <laughs> Man, that was that was fucking weird. The shit that you do when you're like fifteen. Yeah, year I old, know. It's fourteen year old kid. Man, Jesus Christ. I miss I miss being a kid. Like being I'm not like a little kid, but I miss being like about eleven or twelve years old. Because like. Man, we just didn't give a shit. Like the fucking dumb we shit so that we innocent, did. We were so innocent though, as well before the internet. I mean, I don't think fifteen-year-olds these days have like porn stashes in the in the woods. You no. know, it's just not going to be a thing, is no. it? No, you know, it's never. No. It's, it's it's a it's a forgotten world, you guys. So it was, so it was, a, it was a wonderful time, romantic, heady. Yeah, you know, going out. Do kids out do there? Do kids still like set cold. up a tent in their backyard and have a sleepover oh, yeah, in yeah. a tent in their backyard? Yeah, they love all, all that well, the kind of shit. Is the same. Yeah, yeah, they love. The that. only reason they do that is so the parents can fucking have sex. Jesus Christ, noisy, loud sex while the kids are out of the house for an evening. Right? Nah. Nah. Right? <laughs> <I> mean, High five. <laughs> nah. Families. Mums and dads. <laughs> I know what you're doing when I'm in the... My, I was always set out in the fucking tent in the back garden. I spent half my child in the fucking <laughs> garden. Oh, oh, it, it all becomes so clear. Poor Lewis. Poor Jesus Lewis. Christ. Man. I know. It's from 10 yeah. below and Lewis is out camping. Do, <laughs> do I have fun. to go out and sleep in the garden camping again? where they're out there, mum and dad. We're desperate, It's fun. Son. I haven't jammed. Your mother and mom. Had a dildo collection <laughs> arrived this morning, son. You're gonna live in the fucking garden now. Get out. It'll toughen you up, son. You don't want to go to prison, do you? Like I did. 
for 30 years. For dildos. Well, yeah. So listen, you got we, we started off this podcast talking about saying that it was voting day. Have you guys voted? We don't need yeah, to talk yeah. about this for long, but uh-huh. did you yes, guys did. run out first thing yeah. in the morning all I excited and I was there at vote? about 9 a.m. I mean, yeah, because I, I dropped my kids vote. off at school. So it's I, I always vote. I'm not sure I agree with... with it's like, oh, let's, let's not talk about politics. Oh, my God, it's too stressful. We're not going to talk about politics. Let me talk about yeah, something else. Because even talk. us being like best friends, we always have things to argue about. We're never going to see eye to eye on it. I don't think anyone does in politics ever see eye to eye. No. It's, everyone Agreed. has their own little opinions. And it's too it's too much. It's, it's everyone's not, very it's stubborn and set in their ways as it's well. It's not fun to talk about. It's not. Yeah. It's stressful. So, all right, so let me tell you something. For fuck's sake. TED Talk I was watching. This is about the internet. This is a salient point. We were talking right. about kids on the internet and everything like that. So this is a TED talk about safety for kids on the internet. It was a pretty dark talk. It was talking about, you know, all these kind of groomers and all that kind of shit that goes on the internet. But this is this yeah, is yeah. a this is a more important bit that's a, we don't need to go into that stuff. This was about parents letting their kids online. And the, right. the guy told this story. He said that when you like when, when you get to a certain age as a kid, your parents say to you, OK, you, you, you can walk to school by yourself now. Now, here are the rules. You, you go from here straight to school. You don't go anywhere else. When you get to the corner, you look both ways before you cross the road. Always cross at the, at the junction. Don't talk to any strangers. You just go to school. And then on the way back from school, you come straight home. You don't stop, blah, blah, blah. You give them all these rules and everything like that. So he said, imagine if instead of doing that, the rules were, OK, you can go to school today. Off you go. And then a month later, they say, oh, yeah, don't forget to look both ways before you cross the road. And then another month later, they're like, oh, yeah, and don't uh, forget to only cross at the corner and stuff. So it's like instead of giving these kids these rules for how to use the Internet and how to be safe up front, it's sort of drip fed to them. Oh, you shouldn't do that or or not at all as time goes on. And by then the damage might have already been done. So the important thing is to tell them how to use the Internet. And the problem is a lot of parents have no fucking idea about the Internet. The Internet begins and ends with them at what their friends list is on Facebook or and maybe uh, the Yahoo main page or God knows whatever fucking AOL yeah. fucking main page. God only knows or, or some news websites or maybe some online shopping stuff. Whereas yeah, they, don't, it, they don't have any idea what kids are, are up to online. No, that's, that's apparently the a, a big thing now is is kids taking pictures of like their dicks and stuff and sending them to like their yeah, girlfriends yeah. and shit like that. That's what Snapchat I mean, that, is so popular, that, isn't it? That was not a thing. Like when I went to school, like yeah. it was just, nobody was coming to school with a Polaroid, like of their dick to give to their right. girlfriend or anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, you could, they could, people could have done it though. People could yeah, have you done wouldn't. it. But you would have had to I, have a, like a mimeograph of your penis or whatever. The, yeah. the ancient photo version would be like some you need black a microscope and white. To see yours, is that what you're hey. saying? Why? What, what's uh, a, I thought uh, I thought that uh, was microfiche. Ah, uh, yes, you need one of those little magnifying glasses that's like you hold up to your eye to like check it for diamond <laughs> is like real or not. A yeah, jeweler's yeah. loop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's quite the penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, this is really doing it for me. Dirty boy. Yes. I mean, I'd, so, I I. I can't imagine when I was younger ever even being remotely interested in taking a picture of my dick or my balls or my tits or my asshole or anything like that. Would you have been interested if a lady would have sent you a Polaroid picture of her her boobies? I'm sure I would have been, yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I would probably have been like, great, I now have... I now have in my possession a Polaroid of <laughs> a woman's tits. Great, this is nice. But, but, but it's like, all—it's been normalized now. Like um, I guess so. It, yeah. I think I think the 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 real. I don't want to say groundbreaking because that implies a really good thing. But all those celebrity sex tapes that started to come out normalized yeah. the idea of sending stuff to people, and then obviously all this online dating and stuff like that. A lot of the early. Uh, the groundbreakers, the real, the real pioneers of, of online dating, just cut to the chase and sent Pamela people Anderson. pictures of their dicks. She did it. She Pamela Anderson. She, she triggered it. Was yeah, the first yeah. one I remember having a sex tape. Remember she had sex with yeah, a, yeah. We, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy Lee. Lee. Tommy Pamela Lee. Anderson. Yeah, yeah. Tommy Bloody Lee on podcast. a boat. What's yeah. wrong with What's wrong with Pamela Anderson? No, nothing. I'm just saying that it's just such a f- product of our time, isn't it? It's so, so she's so ingrained, old Pammy, old in Pammy. our psyches. Man, she. She rocked that bathing oh, suit, man. though. Like, she was, like, my number one for the longest time. Yeah. Them boobies. Them boobies. Yeah. I guess, like, so, fucking Kim Kardashian is another one. Paris yeah, Hilton Yeah, but she kind of did it on purpose, well. as, as did... Uh, 
as did Paris. Like that was de- deliberately leaked to sort of add a bit of woo. Yeah. Aren't they edgy? You know, aren't they? Yeah, interesting. They saw how well it worked as a PR stunt for yeah. Pammy, and they were like, "I want a bit of that." Pamela Anderson is one of the most American-looking women I think I've ever seen. Like, if you look at uh, she, she is just super duper American-looking. If you look at her in Baywatch, yeah. she couldn't be from anywhere else. I think she's Canadian, though. I think she really? was actually. I think she's born in Canada. Yeah, let's have a look. Pamela she's Anderson, like born in Alberta or something. You're fucking oh, right. Oh, she was born in Ladysmith, British Columbia. Yeah, so Lady the Smith. thing is, though, I exactly mean, it, where they make women. That's, that's, that's my occupation. They, I'm a lady. That's, that's where they carve them into <laughs> into beauties. Yeah, it's weird. Like uh, over here in the UK, um, I guess like. Abby Titmus was had like a, a oh. weird sex tape as well, and she was who else? It's not. Fit. I was a big fan of Abby Titmus. It's not. A, it's not a, like a super common thing over here. That the, no. the whole sex it's a tape. Damn beat. shame. Well, look what happened to Abby Titmus. Yeah. I mean, she has a great name to be a large-breasted glamour model. Her she name does have, literally. Yeah, have, it'd be like me being breasts. called Ted Ted Dick Smith. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you Ted, know straight away Ted. what I was about. <laughs> Ted Tiny Dick, yeah. Hey, Ted Microcock. It's the know. viewers that have tiny penises and the listeners. <laughs> Microcock. And, and huge gaping vaginas as well, of course. That's true, the, that's the, true. The t- and never the twain shall meet. It's like Jack <laughs> Spratt and his wife. What's her face? Uh, what is, somebody in Game of Thrones, I think it was. Um, I think she, she was like a German actress, but I think, I think she'd done like a bunch of porns or something. So that's, a bunch I of guess porns. That's, I guess that's... Germany's answer to like the, the like the home <laughs> sex tape was like, going, away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Shall like, is is, is a leaking sex get. tape something that happens a lot in Europe? Because like the only ones I can think of are ones that have come out of America. Oh, I five guess porn so. stars who appeared in Game of Thrones. There are five. Whoa, five. Jessica Whoa. Jensen. Uh, she was a prostitute in many of the illicit Game of Thrones scenes. Samantha yeah. Bentley uh, worked. To, um, she. Uh, yeah, she was in porn, and now she's uh, she was in Game of Thrones. Maisie well, there are D, a lot of random, the most titties. successful porn actresses in Game of Thrones. She, I think, she was the one that got shot by a crossbow bolt. By uh, spoiler alert, by that little That's shit. That's right. The girl, the girlfriend. She was quite a famous one. The one. Anyway, let's move on from this, or else we're going to get in trouble. Um, really? So I moved out of my old flat. Okay. Um, oh, Edgy. Like, don't the go. Landlord, whew, don't go there, sister. The landlord <laughs> uh, sold the flat. I had to move, so I've moved. I've got a little story from when I was moving out. Oh, this oh, yeah. is going to be good. So we were going through the inventory, clearing out everything. And um, so basically, you know, because uh, this is the flat with the cockroach yep, and yep. stuff. And it's so, a classic, like, part of it's me a classic is like, flat. Part yep. of me is like looking forward to getting out of there anyway. Right. Anyway, so but basically I put everything back for because when I moved into the flat, it was full of crap. And so I shoved all that into the cupboard and I'm getting all this stuff back out again. And there was this big old dirty old carpet in the middle of the lounge and I shoved it under the um, washing machine kind of cupboard and uh, I was getting it out and um, so he was just like standing there like looking over my shoulder it was basically like doing the inventory of the house was like having some sort of school kind of exam okay and he was going around checking on all the cleaning he was checking on all the things were still there and he was like examining me basically it was like it was really weird anyway um, I unrolled this this carpet. Um, just I just put through because it was rolled up. I, I, the carpet. I, I I threw it down to the lounge floor, unrolled it, and I was like, "Oh my god, it looks really weird." And then I realised it was covered in bugs. It was full Ugh. of black and brown little bugs, and they scattered like all over <laughs> the, the lounge floor. Run, lads! Yeah, instantly. Jeez. And and they just scattered, and and I went. Ah! And he, he, the guy was like, ah! And so, because it was a huge rug, and so they scattered just under, under the sofas, under the chairs, under everything. And I was, he was like, what are we going to do? And I was like, oh, I don't know. So I rolled, I rolled it quickly back up and dragged it out of the flat, and I took it down through the lift to the bin. But I noticed that I was covered in little eggs and stuff, and like oh. little, little hairs, and I was like, oh, my fucking God. So I was like... I just dusted myself and went just into the office and had a normal day and did did everything normal. But I was I was literally just genuinely considering going home. I uh, going to my new flat, like stripping off on the doorstep, putting everything in like a metal bin, and then just chucking some lighter fluid in there and just burning the whole lot because I felt like oh I don't want to contaminate my new flat yeah. with um, with that shit. Yeah. So that's a little goodbye present to the people who've moved in. Nice. To my flat. Jesus. They don't know. 
whether that's a thing. So yeah, um, that's that's what happened. So I've moved into this new place in Clifton, and right. I've got a little story of something that happened. So first of all, I broke up with my personal trainer. Oh, right? what did you say? Did he, or did he break up with you, or did you break up with him? Well, I broke up with him. Yeah, that means um, he broke up with you. Keep going. So he basically... It's not you. It's me. me. One morning, we can't see each other anymore. Because he he was like, because he was off on holiday, and when he and then when he came back, I'd moved, and so he texted me at four a.m. saying, "Hey, I just landed in Bristol." I don't know why he texted me. I'm like, because I've got this new stupid phone that I don't know how to use it. Obviously, was on like, but my phone wasn't on silent, so it beeps and it woke me up in the middle of the night, and I was like, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" So I better reply because he said, "I oh, do you want to go to the gym." you know, see you at the gym in like four hours. And I was like, uh, it's been awesome to train with you. And I've had a great time and learned a lot, but can't do this week at all, I'm afraid. I think we're going to have to stop training too because I'm moving and won't be able to make it down to Harborside in the mornings. Okay, so I've made my excuse. And he's like, okay, Lewis, gutted to hear that, dude. Have thoroughly enjoyed training you. What? This wow. is and a lie. Said, How can that be true? He said, fancy meeting up for a coffee at some no. point to have a chat about it. Whoa. I know. God. So, and I didn't reply to that. So that's where, that's it. That's the end of our relationship. You didn't reply. It's really weird. It was really uncomfortable to break up. I really feel like I've you, broken up with You should someone. reply and just be like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll give you a call like uh, in a couple of weeks when I'm settled. And then just No, just call. say nothing. Why, why lie? Just say, just say nothing and then they'll get, get the message. I'm not going to up, Sid, Man, for no is reason. A, that's another human being with feelings. Yeah, but you're you advocating consider. lying rather than just ignoring. I think being ignored is is preferable to having someone lie to you. And then he'll get in contact in a couple of weeks and say, how about the drink? And he'll be like, oh, uh, this week is busy. Uh, how about next week? No, just, just clean cut. Don't ever contact again. Done. You don't need him as a friend. I, I make very few friends. People attempt it. And I'm just well, like, I eh. can see why. Jesus. Yeah, because I don't fucking don't lie to them. Well, you've got a whole bunch of quote unquote friends that you just fib to, Sips. Is that what you're telling yeah, me? Yeah, just I keep them close. And then when I need to, then that's when I execute them. <laughs> 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 Brutal. Uh. So, um, so I've moved to this new place, right? And um, the people who lived in it before me had these newborn twins that I think they were a little bit overwhelmed by. And so they moved out to a slightly bigger place. And um, so I'm renting their place. So I think they left in a bit of a hurry. And also they took a lot of stuff with them that I I guess they needed. And so I've moved in and it's kind of a bit, it it was supposed to be a furnished place, but it's not really furnished. And as a result, it's got, it's weird. So basically, like, first of all, sometimes when you move into a place, there's always instruction manuals for everything, right? So one of the things, the first things I did was um, was try to like just use the the hob, like the the the, the hot plate, and um, it's like it didn't work, and it was like weird. It was making weird clicking noises. It was like I was like, what the fuck's going on? And I I must have like in the back of my mind, I was like, is this an induction hob? Have you ever used an induction yeah, yeah, yeah. hob before? No, that's why I don't have, like, like electric. You have like to have it. these special frying pans, right? It's like a magnetic thing. So it oh, generates this magnetic field. And you have I to have see. a special pan. Yeah. And obviously they're quite expensive and I don't have any, do I? And there's no instructions that, that even told me that this was a thing. No one told me. And so the house is full of that, right? I can't, I don't know how to open the back door, right? I can't figure it out. I've tried everything. It's got multiple Why keys. Did you move I've into stood on the chair. Place, though, like, I don't know. I don't you know you whether not... a fireplace works. There's no. 4G at all. There's no internet. There's no phone signal. You didn't even go see this place, did you? You were just like, wait, wait, wait. you texted you, someone. You were yeah. like, I'll have it. And then now, did you move now in? You're did you even look, or did you just look at pictures on the internet? No, I went around and I had looked, but I didn't know that there wouldn't be. Like, I didn't know that these would be problems. Like, I didn't know that when you move into somewhere new, you don't know that the washing machines could be full of mold and like, other things. You don't. Well, it, yeah. Is there a carpet I've, I've in the, a good Is clean. there a carpet rolled up in the cupboard full of bugs as well? Because like, no, but there are like I think because they had dogs. I think there. I've seen a few fleas around. Oh, man, it's freaking me out. Oh man, bit. why are you, you know, why anyway, anyway, who, 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 whoever you're renting it through, just get them in and say, look, this place is a fucking disaster, man. Anyway, I've got a story. So anyway, there's a lot of problems with it. For example, there's like. It's not a problem, but I'm going to fix it all. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, but the, one of the main problems is, like, this really freaked me out. Um, I got, like, an email that said, hello, Lewis. I'm watching I've, you. <laughs> I've, I've noticed that the, the garden light has been on for three days. Would you like... Uh, and then he said, like, I'm coming. I'm going to come round to turn it off for you or something like that. And I was like, 
What the fuck? Maybe he's got like a webcam set up. You can't see it. And it's like. It was from the fucking estate agent, right? The, right. the letting agency. So I was like, first of all, I was like, one, how do you know? Two, who told you this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and, and three, why are you even telling me? Like, it's, if I want to leave the fucking garden light are there on. Any, are, there any, uh, are there any properties that overlook the back garden? Well, I, I guess so. There's, there must be like another other flats like so above. How, so yeah. You've got a back garden in a flat? It's a basement flat. Oh. So what, it's what, very if, dingy. what if the landlord lives in one of the upper flats or something? Well, no, they've moved to Cornwall. So, I think, it, so basically, man, why, why did well, you move into a dingy basement flat? Like, what? What are you thinking? Yeah, what is this? I is, don't know. You're fix it. Weirdo. I, 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 man, you're, okay. like, you're, you're not fucking Lulu. poor. Like, why don't you get like a nice place that has like a fucking view of the river and shit? Like, fuck I me. No, that's what I had before, but I got kicked out. Oh man, I I felt like I wanted to change. I felt like I, change is good, and I want change, and I want to mess things around, and I shouldn't you have done. I should have just stayed you with the same. A, I should have stuck with what I know, like an old man. You had it. You know what? You had a personal trainer. What I you need so is a good. fucking personal assistant that can sort all this shit out for you. Yeah, you need, man, you need a fun, fucking man. life coach more than you a need physical a life coach. coach. I do. Like a guru. I need a fucking. Pay some you old, old Indian dude to follow you around and be like your guru. Fucking pay me. I'll sort you out. Jesus. I I I was like a bit freaked out by this. So what I did was, I looked through the tenancy agreement. Right. I was like, two could play this game, right? And I found the email address of the landlord, and I sent her an email. Did you say to her, Hello, I can Janice. see you've left the bedroom light on. <laughs> <laughs> you left a pair of your underpants in the flat. I've been sniffing it. I've been sniffing them all night long. Here's I, a I picture did of me sniffing. in your underwear. Oh. <laughs> I did write, like, I hope all the video cameras are working properly. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, God. Like, oh, but I deleted God. that in the end. And I just sent a normal email to the landlord asking about all of these questions weird, that I had. Like, weird things. And so, and they sent a very nice email back this morning reassuring me that it was just um, a, a misunderstanding and it's all fine. It wasn't creepy at all. And uh, I think, yeah, you know what, if you, if you want to creep someone out, I'm, I'm thinking of good ways. If you wait until, okay. the, wait until the evening when they're, when they're probably like watching TV or something, just send them a message saying, can you change your channel, please? I've already seen this. Something like that. That would imply that you're. Right. And they, if there's no <laughs> way that you could see the TV, like they're in bed watching TV, and you're like, "No, I've already seen this. Change the channel." Just an email from a complete stranger. You go. Like, oh! That'd be oh my, my reaction. God. But, but 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 okay. Problem one: Who watches fucking channels anymore? P flags. Everyone watches Netflix or fucking. No, I don't know, other come shit. on. A lot of no people one watches still watch TV <laughs> channels. You know what? Other do. people. You know what? Another thing people don't do is live in a fucking basement with insects for company. That's another yeah. thing. They don't do. You go back and to your most people don't leave their fucking garden light bunker. on for three days. Yeah, either. go back like, to the flea the worst, bunker. You I'll tell you what the worst animal. thing about it is is that there's no fucking. They took the headboard on the bed, right? Jesus. And the wall is kind of a little bit dank and cold. <laughs> what are you doing? And the pillow keeps like slipping down. The, I need a new headboard. You need a new like, house. Oh my God. Get out. Get out of the house. I need a new life. I've, I've actually booked a hotel this weekend. You, to get in, out of the flat? Yeah. This is Bath not a good to sign. To just be out of the flat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going away for the weekend. Yeah, you I make don't bad decisions for a smart well, guy. Well, there's no you internet yet. Choices. If there was internet yet, yeah, I would be okay. But there isn't internet. So, that's so, you, so you're going, me. you're taking, you're, you're having an internet vacation over well, the Well, I weekend. made the traditional fucking mistake, though, of signing up to the, the bane of all of our internet existences. Virgin, right? I, I'm calling them out now. Other internet service providers are available are probably better, right? Superior complains about them all the fucking time on Twitter, yeah. right? I booked the appointment for like this week and they were like, okay, it's booked in in the morning. And I was like, perfect. You know, I can stay at home. I'll, I'll, I, this is, a, you know, we're sorting out other stuff. I'll right, take right. this morning off. And they, they emailed me to say, yes, uh, we'll, we will see you at the appointed time. The Thursday afterwards, between 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. And I'm like, what the fuck? I can't take, like, I can't take the Thursday. Oh, oh my God. I'm just super salty. Oh, man. I'm that's why you never move. Yeah. That's well, I didn't want to. You never move. You know what you need to do? You need to buy a place so that you don't have to ever move again. And you buy yeah. a nice place and you put it just right and there's no problems. I mean, there'll, there'll be a couple of little bits and pieces, but like, like for instance, we were cooking dinner the other night. <laughs> I was doing my... Uh, no, I oh, wasn't, here we go. I, we, this we is a segue. We were using yeah. the oven, okay? We were cooking up. The kids wanted to have some oven chips, okay? 
So we put some oven chips into the oven. All right. Oh, this is fascinating. And it was like early. It was like early too. It was like five o'clock. We're like, fuck, this is great. Like they'll be done. Like half an hour, the kids can eat, and then we'll put them to bed early. And then maybe for once, like actually have an hour in the evening to like not do kid related stuff. Having so, sex. Well, maybe. Anyway, so so the chips are in the oven, right? And then we were just like playing with the kids and stuff. And it, I looked at my watch. It's like, fuck, it's six o'clock. Like, I can't even smell the chips. <laughs> I go in the oven and like the oven's on and like the light's on and you can hear the fan. It's an electric oven. Uh, but like I looked in and like the fucking the chips were still like they still had like a bit of frost on. them. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, what the <laughs> fuck? Like an hour? What the fuck is going on? I open up the oven. It's like no heat whatsoever because the fucking element went. So I had to get a guy. Well, I could have done it myself, but I'm lazy. So a guy came out and fucking replaced the element. Like the, your, your typical fucking ass crack showing, oh, you yeah. know, leaning into the oven, t- replacing the element. Luckily, he had the right element. Like he had he had this van and it had like 40 different elements in it. <laughs> it was like, you know, like when a guy opens his leather jacket and he's like, hey, I'm selling knives. <laughs> like this guy just One had watch. like all these like coiled up oven elements. It was really good. So we, so it's fixed now, but like, you know what I mean? It's just little shit like that, that you can just about handle, but not big shit. Like no internet or like a fucking damp wall where a headboard used to be and stuff like that. You know, you don't, you don't get shit like that in your own place. Cause you put it like the way that you want it. Right. And then you never move ever yeah, again. Yeah. Cause moving sucks balls. Yeah, it does. Oh my God. Well, let's, let's have sips cooking segment. If it's got, if you've got time. I mean, that was kind of it. Like if oh. you're, if you're hungry and you want to put your kids to bed early, just get an oven tray and put a whole bunch of frozen <laughs> oven chips on that <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> put 200 degrees uh, on your oven and then bam, you're, you're good. 200 it's, degrees. That's very hot. That's I've never I, 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 I can give you, I can give you a little one. recipe. If you right, like. let's, hear, let's hear it. Go on. This, no, is, this is for, a, this is for a good Thai curry. Okay. You need right. some shallots. You know, don't use a big onion. Use shallots. It's much better. Okay. Cut them up real fine. Like dice them up really, really, really fine. Yeah. Set those frying nice and gently. You don't want to brown them. Right. And while they're going, you're gonna chop some chicken up. You could use something else. Sips. I don't know. Beans or whatever. Uh, I was assuming. <laughs> okay. And then you're gonna beans. you're gonna you're gonna seal the chicken. So you fry it just so it browns and uh, on the outside, not too brown. Just sort of you know you, you know just colored on the outside. Then you're gonna add your your Thai curry paste, which uh, you can get it from like uh, supermarkets. You can get it from one of those Chinese supermarkets. Just a, a couple of teaspoons of that. Get that frying. Get all that flavor soaking into the chicken while it's cooking. Then you can add some kaffir lime leaves. Whack those in. And then you uh, add coconut milk, like a big old whole can of coconut milk. Whack right. that in there, get it all mixing around, get it get it bubbling nice and juicy. Then I add bamboo sh- uh, shoots and, um, you know, the, the ones that it looks like a piece of cardboard. It's like a little rectangle of bamboo. Right. Not, a, not a bean sprout, but like the bamboo shoots like that. Yeah. Yeah, those. Whack those in there and you set it, set it chilling for like 10, 15 minutes. And then you get your Thai rice, your Hom Mali Thai rice, okay? Now the key to mm-hmm. cooking this is not too much water. So what you do is you rinse the rice just under the cold tap because it's better wet, whack it in a pan, and how? let's say I have one mug of rice, oh. however much I've put a, of rice, I put one and a half times of water. You can add right. a little bit more water if you get afraid, but it gets really nice and fluffy. And then you get it simmering, and the moment it starts, any kind of bubbles, you turn the heat down as low as it'll go on the smallest burn you've got on the hob, put a piece of kitchen paper over the top of the pan and whack a lid on it to seal in the steam, and you give it 10 minutes, almost 10 minutes exactly. You won't even need to drain it. It'll be bone dry, nice and fluffy white rice. Enjoy. Wow. Well, there you go. That go and good. enjoy yourselves. Enjoy your lunch. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Travels Podcast this week with me, Sips, and Pure Flax. Hello. We'll see you bye. next time. And goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, hello, bye. And goodbye. Bye. Hello, bye. Goodbye. Bye.